In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at a few more examples involving related rates. So the first one says, a 15 foot ladder is resting against the wall. So the ladder's length is never gonna change, so we know that that is constant. The bottom is initially 10 feet away from the wall and is being pushed toward the wall at a rate of 1 fourth foot per second. Um, so this is saying that we're initially 10 feet away here and we're being pushed inward at a rate of uh, 1 fourth foot per second. Now because this measure is decreasing, that's telling me that the rate at which x is changing with respect to time is a negative value and it's gonna be negative 1 fourth foot per second. We wanna know how fast is the top of the ladder moving up the wall uh, at 12 seconds after we start pushing. So we wanna know how quickly is this moving up the wall and that's gonna be dy dt. So this is what we are looking for. Okay, um, and we're told that we wanna find this at the time being 12 seconds. So in this problem, we're trying to relate the side lengths here, x and y. And what we could use to do that is the Pythagorean theorem. So we know that uh, x squared plus y squared is going to equal 15 squared. And to get the rates, the derivative of x with respect to t and the derivative of y with respect to t, I need to take the derivative of all, both of these, of everything here. So derivative of x squared is going to be 2x. Uh, again, since we're differentiating with respect to t, I have to multiply by a dx dt, uh, plus 2y, again, times the derivative of y, uh, derivative of y with respect to t, and the derivative of uh, 225 is going to be 0. And let's solve for dy dt. So I'm going to subtract this over and divide by a 2y, so that's gonna be a negative there. So when I do that, I'm gonna get that the derivative of y with respect to t is equal to, so moving that over, it turned out to be a negative 2x, and then it was a dx dt there. And then I divide by a 2y, so really I'm just gonna be left with a negative x over y, because the twos will cancel. And we have this. So the rate at which y is changing with respect to t is going to be negative x over y times dx dt. Now I know dx dt here, but I don't know the lengths of x and y because those are changing. Initially we started at, uh, with a length of 10 feet for this measure of x, but that was 12 seconds ago. So we need to figure out what is the length of uh, x now that it's been 12 seconds. So because it was initially 10, right, so let's see, let's go say x is equal to uh, its initial length 10. We're subtracting a quarter of a foot per second. So every second we're subtracting a quarter of a foot and it's been 12 seconds. So this is gonna be 10 minus three, which is going to be seven feet. So the measure of x is going to be seven feet. So then to find y, I can just use Pythagorean theorem to figure that out. So we have uh, 7 squared plus y squared equals 15 squared. So that's uh, y squared is going to equal 225 minus 225 minus 49. So that means that y squared is going to be 176. And so y will be the square root of 176. I only need the positive roots because we're talking about a length here. Um, so we found that x is 7 and y is going to be the square root of 176. So now I have all of the information that I need and I can plug in to find dy dt. All right, so the derivative of y with respect to t is equal to, uh, x was negative, is 7, but it's going to be negative 7, divided by the square root of 176 times the derivative, uh, the rate at which x is changing, so that's negative 1 fourth, and we have that there. So now you just go in and plug this into your calculator. And when you do that, you get that your rate, uh, that y changes with respect to time is about 0 0.132. And it should be positive because this rate, this length uh, is growing, right? And so a negative divided by negative, or negative times negative is positive. So it should be about 0 0.132. Uh, 
it's growing in a linear fashion, so it's going to be linear feet per second. So that would be the rate at which y is changing with respect to time. In this problem, we're told that two people are starting 50 feet apart. So you have one person standing here, and then you have another person standing here, and the distance between them initially is 50 feet. Um, and one of them starts walking north at a rate so that the angle shown in the diagram is changing at a constant rate of 0 0.01 radians per minute. So they're walking upwards this way. Um, they're walking due north, so they're going to uh, make this a right triangle here. So we know that the rate at which theta is changing, so the rate at which the angle is changing, so d theta dt is equal to 0 0.01 radians per minute. All right, so that's um, the angle theta is changing at a constant rate of 0 0.01 radians per minute. We want to know what rate is the distance between the two people changing. And we want to know when uh, we want to know what it is when theta is 0.5 radians. So the distance between the two people is measured by this diagonal here. Um, you could imagine when they initially start, this measures down here, so it's just that 50, uh, 50 feet there. But as they walk, we have this right triangle here like this. So we're trying to figure out the rate at which x is changing. So the rate at which x is changing with respect to time is what we're looking for. OK, um, so we need to try and figure out a way to relate this length here with this angle measure here, knowing that they started 50 feet away from each other. So what can I use that deals with these two sides in a right triangle and an angle measure? Uh, well, I can use a trig identity and I can use cosine, the trig ratio cosine. I know that the cosine of theta is equal to my adjacent side, which is 50, divided by the hypotenuse, which is x. Okay. Now, I'm going to, because I'm going to need to take derivatives of this, I'm actually going to rewrite this 50 over x as uh, 50 times x to the negative 1. I just think it's going to make taking the derivative a little bit easier. All right, so let's go ahead and differentiate so that we can find our dx dt. So if I take the derivative of cosine, that's going to be the opposite of sine. So it's going to be negative sine of theta. And then again, because I'm differentiating with respect to t, it's going to be times d theta dt um, equals, this is going to be negative 50 times x to the negative 2, and then times dx dt. OK. So let's go ahead and isolate dx dt. Um, this 50 times x to the negative 2 is the same as saying negative 50 over x squared. And in order to isolate dx dt, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of this. So I'm going to multiply both sides by uh, x squared over negative 50. So let's go ahead and multiply both sides by x squared over negative 50 here. So x squared over negative 50. Uh, the negatives are going to end up canceling, so we're going to get a positive there. And we are going to be left with dx dt, so the derivative of x with respect to t, is going to equal x squared times the sine of x, or sorry, sine of theta, x squared sine of theta, uh, divided by 50 times d theta dt. All right. So in this situation, I know the value of theta, but I do not know the value of x. And I know the value of d theta dt. So I need to figure out what x is um, at the time when theta is half a radian. So what do I have that can help me with that? Well, I know that the cosine of theta is equal to 50 over x. So I can find x by using this here. So plug in theta equaling half a radian. So cosine of 1 half is equal to 50 divided by x. Now remember, you're dealing with radians here. So when you're looking at your calculator, you need to make sure your calculator is in radian mode. Uh, we can do cross product and do some division. And we're going to get that x is equal to 
50 divided by the cosine of 0.5. So this is going to get substituted in here for x squared. Okay, so go ahead and substitute in everything that we know. And we're going to get that the rate at which x is changing with respect to time is equal to 50 divided by the cosine of x, or sorry, of 0.5, because we're uh, we know that theta is 0.5. This quantity is being squared times the sine of 0.5, times the sine of 0.5, all divided by 50, and then times my rate at which theta is changing with respect to time, which is 0 0.01. And you plug all this stuff into your calculator, and what you're going to end up with is that uh, the rate at which x changes with respect to time is about 0 0.311. Um, and we're talking about the rate at which this distance is changing. And it's in feet, and we're talking about minutes. So this would be feet per minute.